Ah, welcome, traveler. The weather's getting a bit ugly out there. Why don't you make yourself comfortable in here for a while? I don't mind. Perhaps you're interested in a story? One of a great nation, which thousands of years ago were favored by the gods themselves. A story of a once lush, bountiful mountain city that is now nothing more than a cold, harsh, barren mountain whose history was lost to the books of Tevat. Allow me to tell you the story of Dragonspine. The story of Dragonspine starts over 3,000 years ago, and the remnants left there leave evidence of a civilization that predates Conria. During that time, there was an ensuing war between Andreas, the god of wolves, and the Caribbean, the god of storms. Together, their powers made old Mondstadt into a wasteland. Leftover artifacts describe old Mondstadt as a realm of sub-zero blizzards and ice storms filled with razor-sharp ice chips, all at the command of Boreas. Eventually, a group of people trying to escape this war-torn and frozen land found a beautiful green mountain to the south and settled there, naming it Salve and Dagnir. Inside those ruins, caves, and crannies are the remnants left behind by the people who thrived there, and by observing these ancient remnants, historians started to get a glimpse of what exactly Salve and Dagnir was. <coughs> Excuse me, Traveler, the weather here has been seeming to getting worse and worse, but I'll continue on with the story. Please don't be concerned. These ancient murals are actually depictions by the princess of the nation. She was born under the now-dead Erminsel tree, and she somehow manifested the ability to see the future. These future visions she would depict on the murals that you can find in the caves of Dragonspine. Some of the visions wouldn't occur until far beyond her lifetime, thousands of years into the future. One of the murals depicts the lush mountain. On the right side, you can see a royal of the nation wearing a crown. They are commissioning for something to be taken onto the top of the mountain. Historians were unsure what these people were taking, but I always believed it was materials to continue building monuments on the peak of the mountain. What is perhaps the most intriguing sight on the mural is that right above the mountain, we see a clear depiction of Celestia. Yes, Celestia, floating gracefully in the sky directly above this fruitful mountain. The monument on the top is likely a shrine directly commissioned to win their favor and to display their gratitude to the gods. Something you'll notice if you ever get the chance to see the mural in person is that the Celestia then is completely horizontal. But as we all know today from all of our Tevat, we only see Celestia tilted. Just something interesting to point out. On the left side of the mountain, there are more royals and subjects accepting offerings from a largely decorated individual who has the sun behind their head and in their hands, it simply looks like a floating gold orb. What exactly this symbol means is not entirely known. It could be visions, alchemical powers, or symbolic of simply knowledge itself that was given from the gods. There are also words written on the murals in a very old and ancient tongue, though through the ages, the famous historians have managed to decipher the ancient text and finally discovered what exactly is written on the mural. Once translated, it says, be silent if you wish to learn. The faithful angels help. Historians were amazed to get proof that Salvin Dagnir was directly helped by the so-called angels and gods. Various relics left over from the period also indicate that Salvin Dagnir was receiving blessings, which gives us more proof that the nation was directly helped by Celestia. When has history ever known of Celestia actually helping a nation? And this depiction of a god may be the very only depiction of a celestial or archon or whatever it is an angel that has ever been recorded in the history of Tevat, as far as we know. And it was truly an amazing discovery that will be remembered for the ages. But as you may have learned in your travels, my friend, even the most beautiful diamond jewelry eventually succumbs to tarnish. <coughs> <coughs> I'm okay, Traveler. I, I just need to take a quick breath. Let's continue on with the, with the story. 
The princess had a vision of a black dragon that would surely cause nothing but doom to the world of Tevat. She painted onto these murals her visions. Eventually, the nation of Salvin Dagnir no longer received the blessings of Celestia. Instead, the remnants left over detail the story of a great nail which was sent from the heavens, where it hovered above the nation for some time until it splintered into three pieces across the land. Trees and greenery began to wither away. Storms ensued so strong even the moonlight was not visible. One of the splintered fragments destroyed the Erminsel tree and killed this so-called tree of life. An outlander was living in the land at the time, a traveler much like yourself in fact. He became close to the princess, and she believed he had the ability to seek out into the world a solution to fix the crisis happening in Salvin Dagnir. She gave him a great sword, called the Snow-Tombed Star Silver, giving him the power to cleave through ice and snow. She had hopes he would return one day and save everyone. After the hero ventured out into the cold storms, the princess attempted to graft the Erminsel tree and rejuvenate and breathe new life into the land of Salvin Dagnir. She took a branch from it and attempted to graft it onto another tree into a final, desperate attempt to save her nation. Under the snowstorm and moonlight, the princess born under the great Erminsel tree would wither away and succumb under the moonlight and snowstorms that to this day have yet to completely cease. Eventually, the hero named Immunlocker returned, discovering nothing but frozen corpses, withered trees, and a dead city. In sorrow and rage, he left the Snow Tomb Star Silver with the last beautiful murals painted by the princess, and returned to the storm, where he would eventually succumb to the frost. Some say in the room with the painted frescoes and the cold air, you can still find the snow tombed star silver today left by the great hero. <sighs> I'm I'm okay, travelers. Just the weather here has been so bad recently and it keeps seeming to get only worse and worse. But I'm far too old to travel now. I'll do my best to continue with the story. Why? Historians asked. Why would Celestia? who directly supported this nation and assist in its splendor so terrifyingly and ruthlessly smite them down and ruin this great nation. The truth is that we don't all know. Though if you ask me personally, I believe Celestia was fearful of a human that could see the future. They were fearful of her power to potentially overthrow their future plans, and they targeted the exact tree which gave the princess her abilities hoping to extinguish the potential to ever give life to another human being again that could one day usurp the plans of Celestia. Thousands of years later, the vision of the black dragon the princess saw so many years ago came true, and would fall in his fight with Dvalin, where the cold frost of Dragonspine acts as his final tomb. His heart lies in the core of Dragonspine, with its energy slowly being consumed by the frost-bearing tree. Its final fruit being the Frostbearer Catalyst, which will tell you the tragic story of Dragonspine. Oh no, the weather. Traveler, the weather is getting worse. It's too dangerous to stay here. You need to go down to the base camp and get help. Traveler, go down to the base camp and try to get help. I, I can't accompany you, I'm too old. Please. Go now, and don't forget the story of Dragonspawn.